Hey, good morning folks. Today I'm going to talk to you about a few things that your sellers have to be doing to outfox and outmaneuver your competition to help you win more business. This number here, well we'll come back to that in just one second, but if you don't understand the relevance of that number, then it could probably is killing your business. But first, let's just think about a typical buying cycle and what has to happen for you to make a successful sale. Well, without stating the obvious, you need a prospect or a buyer. That's someone who's committed from moving to a future state from their current position. I use the word committed because if they don't commit, then of course you can't sell them anything. And that actually takes me back to that first number, 60. 60% and it comes from sales benchmark index. Now according to SBI, 60% of qualified opportunity, that includes your opportunity in your funnel potentially, it ends up in a customer no decision. What does that mean? Well, it's uh, quite obvious, the customer doesn't buy. That means you don't sell and that's bad news. The force of attraction that the customer feels to move towards that future goal, well, it's not great enough. In fact, there's a much bigger force of inertia that's dragging your customer down, almost a big anchor, if you can imagine, keeping your customer firmly where they are today. Can you change that? Well, the good news is, yes, you can. You can uh, influence, motivate more of your prospects to take action. That itself is a, a subject of a future video um, that we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about some techniques that you can deploy, your sales teams have to deploy, to motivate more of that, um, more of your, your prospects and customers to actually take action. But for today, let's focus on the, the other 40% of opportunity that does result in a close, that does go through the process. And most importantly, what can you do to um, win your fair share? In fact, what can you do to win more than your fair share of that business? Okay, let's think about the buying cycle. And so your buyer has been motivated or committed to, to doing something. They're in a current position now. They are gonna to move towards a future goal. What do they need to know? What do they do? Well, they need to know what that future state looks like. They need to understand where they are now. And of course, what challenges are preventing them moving to that future state? Once they have that picture, then they can define the new requirements, a specification for that new solution, new service or new products. Essentially, the shopping list that they have to go out and evaluate the market with. Once they have that, then they can make a buying decision and evaluate potentially you, your, you know, your competition. So when do your sellers typically get engaged in that process? Well, ideally your sellers would be engaged as early as possible, helping to shape that future buying vision. But let's inject a healthy dose of reality into this conversation. Um, buyers are doing you know, so much research online now that they are delaying when they bring you and you know, other sellers into the process. So you might only get involved over here when that new shopping list is defined. Um, you might be responding to an RFI, RFP. If you're lucky, you might be in there slightly earlier are trying to shape that but it's probably not going to be as early as you would like all of the time when your sellers do engage in that you know that process what do they typically do well I'm guessing and hoping they ask some fantastic discovery questions really trying to understand this big picture what your buyers goals and objectives what challenges are there in the way where are they right now fantastic or maybe not quite so fantastic because remember you've got competition and your competition will be in there also. In fact, they might even have been in there earlier than you. They might have shaped some of these requirements that you're responding to or at the very best for you, they've come in and joined the race at the same time as you. And even if that is the case, um, they're still gonna be asking the same discovery questions as your sellers. So what does that mean? Well, it means that you might have very little, if no competitive advantage whatsoever. When your buyer or when you have no competitive intelligence and you know, you've maybe got similar products, similar services to your competition, it means it's very hard for you to create a unique and compelling proposition. And when your buyer can't see uniqueness, um, on the various offers on the table, then what do they do? Well, more often than not, they'll pick the cheapest one that ticks the boxes. So what can you do? It's not all doom and gloom. There are things that you can do to very much firmly change the rules of the game into your favor, but you have to disrupt and reframe your buyer's thinking process. Now that doesn't sound very uh, nice. It sounds quite manipulative, but I can assure you that if your sellers can do this correctly, then they'll be doing your buyer a favor. So what do they have to do? Well, they have to bring essentially fresh, fresh information, fresh insights into this conversation. And by doing that, they can reveal some 
hidden or new challenges to your buyer, challenges that your buyer hadn't even contemplated. And of course, that's doing your buyer a big favor. Using that new information, using insights, they can then amplify those challenges such that they become the most important requirements that your buyer has to solve to reach that future goal. And of course, these new challenges, these new requirements will be aligned with the things that you're best at solving. And that can give you a competitive edge, a competitive advantage. Now that sounds like some fantastic theory, but what do you do to you know, deploy this in the real world? Well, a couple of things that are critical. One, you have to have new insights and new information. So you need to be doing your research. Um, but most importantly, or as importantly, those insights, that information have to be wrapped up in stories and stories that your buyer cares about, stories that tap into your buyer's emotional chimpanzee decision-making mind. Now we're gonna do a whole series of videos that look at the chimp mind of your buyer, what tickles that chimp mind, what things make the chimp mind stand up and take attention. That's, a, as I say, a future a series of videos. But the key takeaway is if you can do this well and you can do it correctly, then you can amplify these new challenges in your buyer's head and you can essentially take the, take the focus away from your competition's core competencies and put the focus firmly in the areas that you're best placed at solving. And that means that you and you alone can show your buyer a very clear and a safe path moving from that current position to their future goal. For more information, subscribe to the YouTube channel.